Hello guys, welcome to my next Monday Bible episode. Today's guest is Professor Radim Polchak, Professor of Law and Technology from Masaryk University in Brno. Radim, it's great you could join me. Hello, it's a pleasure to be here. We met in Warsaw at the conference related to quantum computing. And I would like to chat uh, with you about quantum computing, capabilities of this new technology and impact on artificial intelligence. Maybe you could explain uh, how it can impact AI, how can it enhance capabilities of artificial intelligence, particularly in data processing, data analysis. Well, it is difficult to guess. As lawyers, we are now trying to study the developments in quantum technologies in various fields. So it is quantum networks, it is post-quantum cryptography, but also it is this quantum computing. But that is mostly open in terms of what will happen. And mostly we understand it as extremely powerful computing tool that can be used mostly in optimization fields. It is enormous computing power totally unparalleled to what we have now. That's how we look at it. But uh, since artificial intelligence exploded this year, most of internet users are afraid of AI capabilities. If it's linked with enormously powerful computer that uh, stands behind, should we be afraid of that uh, new tool? Yes. Yeah, definitely. And that is exactly this area, this optimization where these AI systems are used. So we are optimizing, for instance, ways in which to influence human mind. We have individuals, and then we know what these individuals are in terms of, we have their profiles. And then we think like how to make this person to go and buy certain product or to vote for a certain party. And the technologies that we have now, we know how to do it, but we are lacking sufficient computational resources. If quantum technology is there, we will have these resources that can be used particularly for these purposes. But for lawyers, it is very difficult to predict where particularly there will be the biggest challenges or the biggest problems that we will need to deal with. It is very similar like we were in the same situation in the end of 1990s where internet was booming and the data economy. And there were various predictions like what will happen. And we had this web 2.0 and then there was something 0 0.30 and then now we have everything is 4.0. And there were predictions, but nobody predicted social networks, for instance. And then they popped up and then they started developing. And now everything is somewhat related to social networks, what is happening on the internet. And I'm afraid that here it will be similar. So we are able to define some ways in which it will go, but then sooner or later we will be surprised that it goes entirely different ways. That's that's the problem that we have to deal with. Okay, but uh, let's predict something. Can you identify any legal challenges we have related to quantum computers? For instance, when AI Act was started to be prepared, nobody predicted large language yes. models and they were added. Should we include quantum computing in AI Act or in some other? That will be probably a bit difficult because Quantum computing is a technology for AI applications, but that, that can be used for many other uh, purposes. And I'm afraid that it would be a mistake to include this technology into the logic of AI Act, because AI Act thinks about applications, and then we have these four categories, and we speak about high risk and these banned applications, etc. But it doesn't speak anything about the technology that we use in order to power these applications. And I think that would totally destroy the logic of the AI Act because the risks we always associate with rights. But quantum technologies, it is just technology. It is just computing power and it's just computing resources. And there is nothing risky on it as such. It can be risky only if it is used in certain way. So I do not think that this is the right way to approach it. Rather than that, I would assume that these quantum computers, they will be mainframes. So it will be like massive technologies that will be operated by some like large companies, probably that we have resources to run them. And I think that if we would think about some regulation of these technologies, probably it will be about regulating these providers separately, but with different logic than we have in the AI Act. Okay. How would you regulate it? Do, do you have any ideas? Would you prohibit it? We would lose in this game of who will get there and who will have first functioning quantum computers. That would be a big mistake. Any kind of prohibition. I think regulation, transparency, and requirements in terms that these technologies are run 
as we know, uh, scientific core facilities are around. We use the term open access and we use it in law for intellectual property. But the same term is used in sciences in open access to various facilities. It can be computing facilities, it can be some biomedical scanners or something. And I think that that would be a good approach to allow the existence of these extremely powerful machines under the condition that they are run either by uh, security establishments or in the military or that they are available as these open access core facilities. So to legislate the ways in which these systems can be run and provided to the public, that I think is the key that we can use to start with any kind of thoughts about regulation. Okay, so let's be a bit futurists. How do you think quantum computing, legislated, regulated the way you said, change our lives in the future? How, how will they affect our lives? This is, this is very tricky because now we are at risk that this podcast will be taken by somebody in 15 years and then they will be laughing at us because if you look at like what people were predicting. So in 1950s and 1960s, we predicted that in the year 2000, we will be living on Mars yes. and we are not living on Mars. And at the same time, nobody predicted that people will be using handheld technologies to communicate with each other. So it is very difficult to predict. And also I'm of the opinion that the law should come in place only when we already have some kind of experience or where we already know, really know where it will go. We started developing 15 years ago laws about autonomous cars. And now mm -hmm. we know that we will not probably have autonomous cars in the way that we thought. And we have these laws written and they are absolutely useless. But I think what we have to look at is how these technologies might challenge free will of people. Now we have these fake news and manipulative campaigns, etc. And that is challenging the society heavily. We saw it during COVID. COVID was partly a problem with the virus, but more problems we caused to ourselves by spreading all these fake news. And there I would look at when we think about quantum technologies, because quantum technologies can amplify these problems. This, I would predict as the biggest challenge, and this is what we should look at when we think about legal tools. I totally agree. Foundation models is a good example. When AI Act had been adopted two, three years ago, it would be useless in this sphere because it wouldn't regulate it. Another question is whether it's necessary to regulate or not. And now the discussion in the European Union is held about it. It is. But here I would think whenever some substantial technological change happened, it was with somebody who came with entirely new idea. So somebody came with the idea to create social network and to monetize it in certain way. And then it happened. And then we had the GPT-3 that suddenly started working and everybody was surprised by it. And very often it is ideas that are coming from nowhere. It is small companies or it is individual people who are just visionaries and they come with something. And here I think that the regulation could be dangerous if it will prevent the emergence of these ideas that can move us somewhere. Hmm. And when you mention foundation models, I think is a good example. And we can use a similar approach to quantum technologies as well, because foundation models will probably not be created by startups. Mostly it will be well-established companies because you need a lot of investment in order to create the foundation model. And if we regulate providers of foundation models, and if we regulate them more, then we can provide for what we need from the regulatory perspective. And then we do not need to regulate that heavily those who will develop their own particular solutions upon these uh, mm -hmm. foundational models. Now there is this big debate about foundational models and there was the trialogue about it. And some member states say, don't regulate foundational models. I think we should regulate foundational models because the more we regulate them, the less we will have to regulate the startups. That will be the small, you know, whatever spin of startups, the small companies, and they will not have money to deal with all these compliance requirements of regulatory issues. I think we can use the same approach to think about regulating the availability of quantum computing technologies and to rather regulate their availability and their providers and to force them to certain level of compliance rather than to try to regulate startups or individuals developing something upon these technologies.
I remember in Warsaw, we discussed enormous capability of cryptography and quantum computing. So enormous power to breach all the cryptographic security and tools. And I remember the question whether there is going to be a war between some quantum computers owned by states or owned by public authorities from different states. This was really interesting concept. That is probably the only area where we know what quantum computers, if they will become available, what they will do, that they will render many existing cryptographic tools obsolete. And this is something that we already know. And we know that there will be some response needed to it. Legally, we will have to implement different standards for encryption, and we will have to work with these post-quantum cryptographic tools more than we work with them now. That is obvious, but that I would understand more as security challenge or as technological challenge, mm-hmm. not that much as a legal challenge. Mm-hmm. But don't you think the loss in the field of security or cybersecurity is already prepared? To these I think challenges? we do not need to have any kind of systemic change or substantial reshaping of it. And maybe we will have to use or we will be able to use the existing laws that we have about classified information and the need to use cryptography because mostly these laws are worded in the way like there is a duty to use certain type of cryptographic technology and then what particular type of cryptographic technology is set in some standard Mm -hmm. and what we will have to do is that we will need to change the standards but not the main regulatory framework i do not think that there is any need of systemic reshaping or any kind of blue sky thinking this is needed in cryptography and in these technical disciplines therefore sure and development of these post-quantum cryptographic tools it is already happening but in law We do not need any blue sky thinking. We need blue sky thinking for quantum computers and how they will be applied in these, yes, AI applications, these optimization tools that I spoke before. Okay. Very interesting takeaway. So laws are quite prepared to this new technology, but still we don't know how they are going to be applied. So lawyers should accompany all these changes and take care of it. Uh, Yes, but this is in cryptography. In cryptography, I think we will not have to substantially change the laws. In other fields, probably yes, and very substantially, but we don't know which fields it will be relevant. And yes, my thinking, as I mentioned, is that probably it will be in the fields that protect the free will of people. Okay. Uh, Is there any working group in Czech Republic uh, regarding this matter, or this is still the future? We are now working on a national strategy, on national quantum strategy. So now it is being put together and there are different ideas that are coming into it. I think that we should look at what we have and what we are going to do and where we can do something. And I think if a strategy like this is being put together, the most important part of it is probably that we say what we are not going to do, because then you can concentrate resources, but it is very difficult to outline the ways in which the development will go. Because in exactly the same way as with artificial intelligence, we plan certain ways and then generative technologies pop up and everybody speaks about generative technologies and we are developing tools, even at universities. Uh, We didn't think about generative technologies a year and a half ago, and now everything is about generative technologies. So I would be very modest in trying to define some big visions. This is not popular to say like we are lacking visions. I have seen so many visions, but I think that here we do not need any like clear vision. We need to look at it and to see where the development goes. And then if we are sure and if we know that there is some problem, then to work on that problem, but rather to be prepared than to develop tools in law on something that will probably not happen like autonomous cars are living on Mars. Radim, thank you for your insights. Thank you very much for your call. If you guys want to join my episode, subscribe, thumbs up, visit next episodes. Thank you, Radim, for being here. Thank you for having me. Take care. Bye.